What is up, guys? Welcome to week five of the UPA. This is our team builder. This week, we are taking on Immortal Ments, Coach of the Hog, Haluchas, and this is the guy that helped me team build for last week's battle. A great guy, a great friend. I uh, really appreciate all his help once again. And uh, this time, we have to face off against him. And I am not looking forward to this game, I can tell you right now, guys. Uh, it is probably the worst matchup imaginable for me because there are two Pokemon in this game that completely wall break my team and he has them both and those Pokemon you will see them come up on your screen on the right and they are Infernape, Vaporeon, Exploud, Yuxi, Spiritomb, Clefairy, Megalodios, uh, Porygon 2, Sneasel, Sandslash, uh, that's Scallopede there and uh, Kling Clang. So, uh, my opponent recently made a transaction, dropped Rotom Mo, and picked up Sandslash. I was actually thinking of dropping Chestnut and picking up his Rotom Mo that he dropped, but I decided to stray away from that because I already had two other electric types in Electros, and Magnezone would have given me a little bit of a faster one, but I didn't feel like it fit the team very well, whereas Chestnut can complete a role that... Uh, not a lot, of, a lot of other Pokemon can, and that is a Spike Stacker, and that's actually what we're going to be doing this week. Uh, we're on Infernape right here. We should probably be on Deancey, because that's what we're starting with. As you can see, we're bringing Mega Deancey, and this time around, uh, contrary to most weeks that I've brought it, we're bringing a fully offensive set, and this thing wall breaks him back. Uh, as you can see, the Infernape does not want to take a Moonblast. The Vaporeon, after two layers of spikes, if it's not running any special defense, does not want to take two Moon Blasts. Uh, Exploud doesn't want to come in on it. Neither does Yuxi, doesn't appreciate it at all. Uh, Spirit Tomb doesn't like the Moon Blast, it goes straight down if it's not AV. Uh, Clefairy also does not want to take it. Uh, is that Clefairy? Yeah, that's Clefairy, okay. I was wondering if it was Cleffa or not. Uh, we can knock out the Megalodios from full. The Porygon 2 is the only Pokemon that can really take it well. Maybe even the Sand Slash uh, can take it on a little bit, but uh, Sneasel goes straight down to the Moonblast. So does, uh, well, Scallopede goes down to the Diamond Storm. That's why we're running it, uh, as well as Kling Clang going down to the Earth Power. So got to make sure Kling Clang doesn't set up on me. I'd be surprised if it comes, though, because I have a couple of Pokemon that check it pretty well. So this is our Mega Deancey set. I'm running Protect. Now, you could say, well, you just copied the basic standard uh, competitive set. It's not real prep, but it is actually, uh, except for the fact that I'm missing four EVs. So we'll put that in attack. Um, it is prep because there are two Pokemon that I'm expecting for him to bring choice, and it's the two wall breakers that I mentioned before being Infernape and the Exploud. Now, in a test game I had against a uh, friend of mine from the UPA, uh, not the UPA, excuse me, the NBA, Dom, Dom's Game Room, he brought a Scarfed um, Infernape and a Spex Exploud. And Scarfed Infernape was actually a special set rocking the Hidden Power Steel for Deancey. So Protect is on there and Protect was there in our game as well because if those two are choiced, I want to see what they lock themselves into because I always have a response for whatever move they go, go for. Except for maybe Exploud's Hyper Voice, because that thing is impossible to take on. Um, we're rocking minus special defense. We shouldn't actually. We should be a negative attack, because uh, this investment uh, actually allows us to still Oko a non-defensive Scallopede. So we should be good with that. I'll actually put that 4 into defense instead. Uh, or even special defense. Maybe I'll be able to live a uh, Boom Burst a little bit better. But uh, if it locks itself in a Boom Burst, I can stay in and Moon Blast it. Uh, or switch into Armaldo, which is actually a very nice switch to, uh, to Boom Burst. Uh, I can, uh, if it locks itself into Surf, I can switch into Chestnut. Uh, if it locks itself into Fire Blast, I can switch into Coverage, our Electros, which is going to be a Salt Vest, as you guys will see in a little bit. If the Infernape is running Close Combat, I can pretty much not swap in anything, but Close Combat doesn't actually take out Deancey from full unless it's from a Banded Infernape. Uh, so I'll be able to knock it back out with the Moon Blast. Uh, if it locks itself into a special move, I know that I can switch into Electros every single time. If it locks itself uh, into HP Steel, that's an easy switch. So basically, Deancey is here to scout whatever my opponent's choice mons want to go for, and then uh, make the appropriate switch afterwards into whatever I need to. Now, this team, I'm not expecting him to expect me to, to bring these mons, because four of them are actually my lowest tiered mons. Uh, and one of them is a Pokemon that I have not brought very often because it has a quad weakness to flying, and I don't want my opponent to um, 
to take advantage of that. Such a Sneasel can run a uh, Aerial Ace, so as we know from our own Weavile, we're not bringing Weavile or Entei this game because they don't do very well. Entei struggles against Vaporeon, and Weavile is almost completely walled by Infernape minus carrying uh, Aerial Ace, but then again, he could just have Vacuum Wave or Mach Punch to knock us out, so it's not worth it. Uh, instead of bringing these mods, our next Pokemon here is Armaldo. Uh, Armaldo is a very similar set to the one we ran last week, however, this time I'm not running as much defense investment. In fact, I'm running a lot more attack. Reason being that a Stone Edge from uh, Armaldo uh, with this attack investment is able to knock out Scallopede, of course. I think it even knocks it out without any attack investment, but the important part is that Super Power and Earthquake uh, Superpower takes out X, uh, Exploud from full if it's not running any HP investment. Even if it is, it has a hard time uh, taking it. It has to run a lot of HP to be able to take my Superpower. And Earthquake Oko's uh, Infernape if it's not running any uh, any investment as well. And th with the amount of defense EVs that we have in the HP, we're actually able to take, um, I think it's 4% uh, of the time his... Um, like 0.4% of the time his Infernape is going to be able to knock us out with two Scarf Flare Blitzes or Close Combats so we'll be able to knock him back out with an Earthquake as a result. This is also our Stealth Rocker. Getting up rocks in this game would actually be very very nice. Uh, I'm also running Spikes. My opponent's only hazard removal are the Mega Latios, which I don't expect to be running Defog, and the Sand Slash. Now the Sand Slash is new to his team, but I fully expect him to have picked it up for our match and for future uh, future matches, because I actually have a pretty hard time dealing with that Sand Slash. Uh, my Deancey doesn't want to stay in on it. Um, Entei uh, doesn't want to take an Earthquake from it if he decides to run Scarf for some reason. It is his Rapid Spinner. We're not bringing the Blade this week because it actually has a, a terrible, terrible matchup uh, against my opponent. The Vaporeon walls it. The uh, Infernape walls it and knocks it back out with like a Fire Blast. Uh, also, Exploud can run Fire Blast. And it, the fact that it has Scrappy means that even if it's choiced, I can't switch into Blade to a Boom Burst because it's going to hit me anyway and it's doing over half if it's Specs. So... I gotta be very careful with that x -Blood. it's probably the biggest threat to my team. And, um, like I said before, we're not, we're not bringing, um, we're not bringing the blade. And being as Sand Slash is the only Rapid Spinner, if I can get up a layer of rocks and a layer of, uh, spikes, wearing down my opponent's team is gonna be extremely easy from that point on, because I have a lot of coverage, uh, on my team, mostly fighting coverage. And uh, you guys will see that right here. We're running Electros. We're running a Brave Nature this week. Uh, you guys will see that 29 speed IVs. That's actually to guarantee that I am slower than Vaporeon. Because I don't want it baton passing for free. Uh, when I go for... Or baton passing out into Sand Slash or something like... Um, Yuxi when I go for... Um, for Volt Switch. I want it to be faster than me so that I can gain initiative off of it. Uh, and make sure that it's not baton passing after I hit it. Uh, and that he gets the switch into whatever he wants, basically. Knockoff is there to be able to get rid of Clefairy and Porygon 2's Eviolites, as well as knocking off crucial items like choice items, leftovers from Vaporeon. Uh, it hits super effectively on the UC, potentially getting rid of leftovers as well. If we get rid of an Assault Vest on... Uh, the Spirit Tomb, that can also be a lot easier to deal with with the Ansi, of course. Uh, we have the potential of knocking off a Life Orb on the Sneasel, which makes it less of a threat. Uh, Sand Slash, if it, we get rid of its leftovers, then it's not getting residual recovery. Uh, it ha has no none of its own either. Uh, if we get rid of Scallopede's potential Life Orb or Black Sludge, that's also very good. It won't be able to Oko uh, pretty much anything uh, at that point, and we'll be able to, to knock off into, vol into Slow Volt Switch and get the matchup after that. Uh, Clink Clang, of course, uh, if we get rid of an item on that, that's nice. Um, Giga Drain is there for the, the Sand Slash because it pretty much walls me otherwise. Uh, I'm able to two-hit KO it with this special attack investment of 80 EVs. The 180 attack uh, is also to be able to knock out the x -Plowd. I want him to think that he can do a lot of damage to me without me being able to hit him too hard back. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can Drain Punch him and... Uh, actually, Drain Punch doesn't knock him out. The reason I EV'd this this way was for Super Power, uh, just like our Armaldo. So, Super Power is going to be able to knock out the X-Cloud and eliminate that threat early in the game. If he doesn't bring either the Infernape or the X-Cloud, I will be extremely surprised and happy at the same time because I won't have to deal with one of them. So, uh, I'm just packing the correct coverage to be able to hit his... Uh, well, basically his entire team. Uh, again, slow volts, which is really nice for the Vaporeon so that it doesn't gain initiative off of um, Baton passing on me. He would have to run zero IVs 
uh, and uh, negative speed nature to be able to hit 121, which is right above this. So I don't expect him to necessarily do that. I just want to guarantee that I'm slower every time. Our next Pokemon is Koba the Chestnut. This week we're running a leftover set with Woodhammer is uh, a guaranteed Oko on the Sand Slash after a Spike. Uh, Drain Punch is there to hit once again the uh, x -Plow. The special defense investment that you see here with 168 special defense EVs and uh, 248 HP is actually to be able to live Choice Specs Modest Fire Blast from x 100% of the time and knock it back out with a Drain Punch. So... Uh, or not necessarily knock it out, but bring it down very low. It will get knocked out more than likely after a spike. Uh, and we're also running spiky shield on here. Uh, again, the same reason as Deancey's because I want to see what my opponent locks themselves into. If, uh, let's say it's uh, a Scarfed Infernape going for Fire Blast, I spiky shield on it, I don't take any damage, I switch into my Electros or my Deancey, whichever one, and then just gain momentum. Uh, from there on. We're uh, overgrow this week because bullet uh, proof doesn't really do anything and I'd rather hit harder with wood hammer if I'm l at less than 30%. Especially on things like Clefairy, on the um, on the Porygon 2 of course, uh, pretty much everything on his team. This thing can never be in against Scolipede or I'll lose, <laughs> so I gotta get rid of that thing early. Uh, I did get swept by Dom in the first game we tried. He just set up a Swords Dance and won the game because I decided to switch out my Primeape and not go for a Stone Edge, uh, where that would have obviously knocked out his Scolipede um, because of uh, the adamant nature. But anyway, I just gotta make sure that uh, Scolipede never sets up on me. Uh, even if it's in, it has a speed boost against uh, Deancey, I just gotta go for Diamond Storm. I gotta make sure that it does not uh, get up a swords dance or I lose the game straight out so uh, that's pretty much it for chestnut leftovers of course to be able to, uh, to soak up hits a little bit better it can definitely switch into a surf every single time with the special defense investment it takes absolutely nothing it takes like 16 to 20 percent so and that's a choice specs mon with a lot of special attack and modest so uh, our next Pokemon here is our primary wall breaker we have Stoutland, a Choice Bandit, Scrappy with Frustration, Pursuit, Superpower once again, and Facade. We're running five fighting moves this week because they do very well against my opponent's team. Um, Superpower is actually my strongest move to be able to hit Spirit Tomb, and I know that sounds dumb, but with the Scrappy ability, we are able to hit Ghost Types, so it's very, very nice having this Pokemon around. He does not have a single switch into Frustration. Porygon 2 is the Pokemon that takes it the best, and it still takes like 40%, so uh, Clefairy is 2-hit KO'd. Uh, Vaporeon comes very, very close to being 2-hit KO'd. It's, uh, it's a roll. Uh, it's in his favor uh, to avoid it if he's leftovers. So um, basically, this thing is designed to come in on x every time it gets a kill and get a kill right back. Um, saying that, I should probably be running um, Retaliate on this Stoutland to be, to, hitting, to be hitting as hard as humanly possible when I come in on that x uh, But I don't necessarily want to do that because... I need the superpower there to be able to hit the uh, Porygon 2 and 2-hit KO it, to be able to hit the uh, Spirit Tomb and 2-hit KO it potentially, uh, the x as well, it Oko's, uh, Frustration does not necessarily, it's uh, again a roll, uh, I need the superpower there for the Kling Clang as well or else I can't hit it at all, Pursuit is there for the Megalodios if it has a drop from a Draco Meteor, um, We'll be able to pursue it and trap it. The same thing with the Uxie. Uxie can't really stay in on me. Uh, it's going to take a massive amount of damage, so Pursuit will be there to weaken it. I haven't talked much about Uxie because I don't think it's necessarily coming against me. Uh, it doesn't have a very good matchup against the majority of my team. It can't really hit anything too hard, so um, finding the same issue in the NBA. I actually have Uxie in my other team, so um, it's not the best mon to bring if you want to go offensive on your opponent. Uh, if you're going for a more wall... Uh, type match walling your opponent out then you see is definitely very good and it gets great coverage But I don't see him bringing it pursuit is there just in case though. Uh, it also keeps the um, the Sand slash low if I want to pursue trap that and facade is there because my opponent has a Vaporeon and a uh, Spirit tomb that can both potentially burn me one with will-o-wisp and the other one with uh, scald burn uh, also, Clefairy can Thunder Wave me, uh, the Porygon 2 can hit me up with a Tri Attack and get some kind of status on me, as long as it's not Freeze, then we're good. Um, Facade is there to be able to take advantage of being burned and still hit ridiculously hard with this thing. I do not want to lose any power from being potentially burned from uh, Vaporeon, so that's why Facade is there. Again, I could run Retaliate. It might change from here to the game. It's still early in the week. Uh, we're having our game on Thursday. I'm actually recording this on Tuesday, so 
Uh, you guys are probably seeing this on Saturday. Uh, it should be up on Saturday. Hopefully not everything goes according to plan this week, unlike last week. But uh, that's going to be our Stoutland set. We're running Frustration over Return because I think it's just... Uh, it's it's nice to switch it up sometimes. Um, mostly for Ditto because Ditto has to run the right amount of... The right happiness to be able to ca copy things like Frustration and Return. Obviously, my opponent doesn't have Ditto. But if I can... Um, if I can throw off my opponents by bringing a different uh, normal type move in return or frustration every week uh, that I bring Stoutland, then it's very hard to predict which one I'm going to go for. I don't even know if I play the uh, the player that has Ditto the uh, this season, but we'll see when it comes to that. Anyway, coming down to our last Pokemon, Jake the Primeape, we are Choice Scarfed, Anger Point. <laughs> this, uh, this set is pretty crazy. Um, basically, should anything crit me, with, let's say, a Sucker Punch from Spirit Tomb, or, well, obviously I can't touch that very hard, but uh, let's say a Tri Attack from Porygon 2, a, an Ice Shard from we uh, from Sneasel if it's low, uh, a Knock Off from Sand Slash if I decide to switch into my Primeape, or a Rapid Spin even, um, a Poison Jab from the Scallopede, which I don't believe takes me out with my HP investment. Um, pretty much anything that doesn't hit too hard, if I get crit at any point, this thing is sweeping. Straight up, it's sweeping if he doesn't have a Scarfer that's faster than me. His, uh, his the only potential Scarfer that he could possibly bring that I can see uh, is Exploud. And with our uh, speed investment, it's the same as on Mika, our Stoutland. Uh, we have enough speed investment to always outspeed um, Timid, Max Speed, uh, Exploud without a Scarf. So this is the same concept. If he brings Scarf, Timid, um, Exploud, we will be able to outspeed him by one or two points because of the uh, the scarf. Uh, obviously, it goes up by 1.5, but uh, we'll be able to basically knock everything out with close combat. I think it does uh, like minimum 90% to Clefairy, uh, knocks out the Latios, knocks out the Porygon 2, the Sneasel's gone, we kill like 16 Sneasels. Uh, <laughs> we basically go to max attack. It's like a belly drum boost if I switch this thing in on a move and get uh, crit. Uh, just like a very very light hitting move like um, I don't know it could be it literally could be anything uh, it could be an ice beam from Porygon 2 I won't go any further on that but that's why we're running anger point there's no point in running vital spirit this week because the only sleep move he potentially has on his team is yawn on both Vaporeon and the Uxie I believe um, and it's not worth running for just those two. Uh, anger, uh, anger point is obviously the best. That's what we're running. Defiant, again, my opponent has no intimidators. I expect him to run rapid spin over defog, uh, bringing sand slash. There's nothing that's going to lower my, uh, my stats at all and give me the defiant boost. So anger po point is the absolute best ability to bring this week. We're also bringing U-turn for momentum. That's going to be the move I'm probably going to click the most. Be able to get out into our Stoutland on a slower Pokemon and our... Um, Deancey on a faster Pokemon. Uh, that's basically what I'm going to tr try to work with is uh, get in uh, my Deancey on uh, faster Pokemon that can't take hits and Stoutland on slower Pokemon that normally can take hits but because we're banded we wall break them. So uh, Stone Edge is there so that we don't lose the Scallopede on turn one. This is more than likely my lead and Gunk Shot is there of course to hit the, uh, the Clefairy for super effective damage because it pretty much walls the rest of my moves. So that's the team guys, I'm really hoping it works out because this is an extremely difficult matchup for me because of the Infernape and the Exploud. He can literally run anything on the Infernape, anything that he wants, if he wants to run Nasty Plot Vacuum Wave he can, and that's gonna destroy me. Uh, he can run uh, Banded, he can run Scarfed, I'm expecting a Scarf set because it outspeeds my Deancey and he would not not want to outspeed that. Uh, every time his Infernape would get a kill I would come in with Deancey and get a kill right back, so uh, that's what I'm thinking he'll bring. And, uh, yeah, but, like, just in general, his team is really, really scary. His kill leader is the Infernape. His secondary kill leader is the Sneasel, <laughs> believe it or not. So, that's, uh, that's kind of scary when you think about it, that a player can, uh, get a bunch of kills with a Pokemon that's a, uh, I think it's a rank 4, uh, rank D or rank E in our league. Um, that's, that's extremely terrifying, so... Uh, Mentz doesn't have the best record right now, uh, doesn't really show how good of a player he is because he did win season 4, he is the champion of season 4 and uh, I fully expect him to bring his A game, uh, even though he's leaving on vacation, I catch a lot of people leaving on vacation uh, that I'm trying to record with or schedule things with, but um, he is leaving on Friday so we're going to have our, um, 
our game on Thursday. Hopefully he's prepared well enough. Uh, I already talked to him about it. We Neither of us want to lose to hacks to each other. Uh, we want this to be a hacksless game, and whoever wins, it's because they outplayed the other. So, uh, best of luck to you, Mints. If you're watching this, uh, the battle's already happened at this point, but if you're on vacation and you're still watching my videos, kudos to you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks to all of you, of course. If you enjoyed this team builder, leave a like down below. If you have any suggestions for any sets that you guys want to see, uh, or any kind of, uh, I don't know, just, I can, I guess you guys don't see the matchups, so you can't really come up with anything, but, uh, just anything in general, if, uh, if you like the nicknames, leave a comment, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, both are in the description as always, and, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see any of these league matches, or any of the lives that I put up four to five times a week, definitely hit that red button, and, uh, that's it, guys, thanks again for watching, catch you guys later, ciao.